Hey y'all, welcome to Sunflower Tasha DIYs. I'm Tasha. I like to do arts, crafts, DIYs, recreations, bobble journaling, thrift, and trash lips on my channel. I hope you guys enjoy my video today. Hey y'all, we're back with another collaboration with Just Your Imagination. Our hosts are Kathy Jo DIYs, that's Kathy, and Rustic and Lace DIY, that's Brenda. And their co-host today is Simply Blessed Crafts, and that's Tiffany. So each month, Kathy and Brenda pick out um, somebody's video of a craft that they really loved, and um, that person gets to be the co-host for the next month. So you can check out everything down in my description box, and that's what I made today, you guys. So project number one, I'm using these uh, two funnels. These funnels I actually got in some spice jars that I had ordered from Amazon. They just came with them. So that was nice, but I've never really used them ever. So because I have a um, metal, I guess, one or stainless steel one, I guess, um, that I use that's small like this. So these two just been sitting in my drawers. So when they said funnel, I was like, oh, cool. But I also went and bought the black funnel because I actually forgot about these ones until later. So what I'm doing here is I trim down those funnels just a bit um, because I really want to try to make some uh, silos, I guess. I think that's how you say that. It's uh, what they store like corn and peanuts and whatnot food and stuff in um the farmers so I probably should have ended up using the tacky glue for this it probably would have been easier than the mod podge but I did end up using mod podge um on this so what I'm doing here is I want that crinkly effect that you get when you crunch up the foil okay you guys so actually, let me talk about this. So this is one of our challenge items. I actually use all the challenge items in all three of my videos today. So we have to use aluminum foil. We have to use a funnel and a napkin um, for this challenge. And like I said, I use that in all of them. Now I'm putting some Mod Podge on top of that uh, little can. That little can is actually a mushroom pieces it's called mushroom pieces canned sometimes when I can't find mushrooms at the grocery store I will go and grab those because me and my husband eat a lot of mushrooms we like mushrooms and onions with just about anything um I even love them on my eggs um I eat eggs every morning with mushrooms and onions just about <laughs> so um like I said when I can't find any I will go buy some of the cans um, and they have some organic ones that I pick up and the bigger can, my husband loves fire roasted corn. So I get that for him and those are my cans. And then here we go. I cover them both, like I said, with the foil. And now we're taking this jute cord that I picked up from the Dollar Tree and I am going around the entire, um, top there where the funnel and the can meet together all right and then um i'm going to take and do like a cross over the top so i do one side glue it down and then i'll go ahead and do the other side and i put a little glue on the top and then tack it down to the other side all right and then i do that two more times here Glue it one side, top, glue it down to the other side. So we have kind of like a little pattern over top. Now, I probably should have cut these down just a bit smaller. I was not even thinking about it because the roof roof is kind of high on these. But that's okay. Um, and then I'm just going to take this thicker jute cord, you guys. I could not find any of this stuff anywhere. I looked at all four of my stores here and I couldn't find any jute or any of the white. I did have some white in my stash, but I didn't really want to use it because it's extremely thick. Um, 
but I was very sad because my next project, I really wanted the bigger jute cord. But anyways, we'll get there. Next, once I was done doing this to both of them, I'm going to go ahead and cover the tops of these with, it's called Silver Lining Waverly Chalk Paint, Chalk Paint by Plaid. And when I put this on and let it dry, it was way too light at the top for what I was looking for. It did perfect for where I'm going to, for the bottom half, but the top half I wanted a more of a darker grayish color and um, this was not giving me what I was looking for. So I had this gray uh, chalk or Waverly paint. Um, I didn't like it. It looked like it was like a glue now, like had dried up. I've had it for a while. So I'm just going to mix up my own gray here. I'm just using some white and some black apple barrel paint. Or no, I used the white chalk paint and then black apple barrel paint. And when I get me a dark gray, I will go ahead and cover up the top of the uh, uh, roof here. And um, I did, this was still actually kind of wet, so it kind of blended together and that was just fine for me. Now I am going to cover the can with this napkin. I am in love with this napkin. I saw my friend um, Katie from Lady Red Crafting uh, use this napkin and I told her how much I loved it and she sent it to me and I have been itching to use this since the day she sent it to me and I'm just like patience patience it'll come it'll come it'll be perfect and it'll come so I waited to use it and, to, and then today it was just it was perfect so I am going to Mod Podge the sunflowers down to the um, can. Now, you guys, I actually was going to use all of these videos in my sunflower and bees video, but um, I decided not to that I could use it for this one. Um yeah so i hope you guys enjoy watching i hope you get lots of inspiration for everybody else and i am actually excited too to see what everybody else comes up with with these weird items <laughs> that we're crafting with love it love it love it all right and then i did a, a mod podge over top of the entire thing as well just to make sure everything was going to stay down now um I decided I was going to draw on a couple doors here and on this one, um, this one had some writing on the front of it so I decided to cover that part up on this one because there wasn't really any writing on the rest of it and I felt like it didn't match. So we'll just make some doors here. So this could either be, you know, the little food container storage things on the farms or it could be a birdhouse. I don't know. It could be probably whatever you want it to be. And then I take some of this Distressed Ink in Vintage Photo. And I just go over top of the entire can and kind of uh, dirty it up a bit here. And this is where all those crinkles and wrinkles and cracks and stuff are going to just come to life um on top of these and then once i was done with that i'm going to take my black permanent ink and i'm going to go over top of this here and there not heavily like i did the brown a more lighter um coat here with the black all right let's go ahead and hop into project number two so here is the funnel this is actually what i went and bought to make for this craft and um it gave me a little trouble at first because I don't know what I was thinking at first when I was thinking I was like I was thinking that littler piece I was going to make a rolling pin out of but I don't know why for the love of god of me 
I was like, I can't make a rolling pin out of that. But then I was like, oh, I could make a rolling pin out of that. So you could and just use the foil and get it thicker on one side with the foil than the other side. That way it's even. And then you could wrap it because this was another idea I had. Um, you could wrap that um, with some fabric and make it look cute and make a little rolling pin and just put some two little dowel caps at the end. I really thought about making that too, but I didn't. I ended up making something else with that long skinny piece. Now, as I'm babbling here, this middle piece, I was going to use on another can and make another can, um, make three of those. And then I decided not to, that I needed that piece when I made my second video. So I left this part in here so you could kind of sort of see what I was doing here. But all I did was wrap this piece that I cut up from the funnel into that little cap looking thing. Because like I said, I was going to use that for a third one and decided not to. So here is the bottom half of the funnel. There's the top and then I had the middle piece, which the middle piece I'll tell you about here shortly. So when I went back to the Dollar Tree to get me some jute rope, I could not find any thick jute rope at all. I had to use this thin stuff. So I wanted to make a ball that would fit in top in the top of this um, funnel black piece we just covered. And that's when I took the middle piece that we covered in foil and I made it into a ball to fit in there. And I just didn't show you all that because it just wasn't necessary. And it did fit. And once it fit, I glued it to itself. And then now I'm just going to take some more of that jute twine. And I started it here, but then I was like, oh, wait, I want to paint the top of this black. That way, none of that shiny, silvery stuff um, peeks through uh, the jute cord in, in case I, you know, didn't get it quite well enough. All right, so once I was done um, painting the top, now I'm just going to finish the top off here with some of this um, jute cord. Okay. And then I also have this black jute cord, and I believe I got this one off of Amazon. I also bought another one off of TMU, but it's a bit different than this one. Um, yeah, so here I am just rolling it onto itself into a circle so I can make that the entrance for the beehive. And then I went ahead and used that distressed ink to dirty that up and glued this down. All right, now I cut out these pieces of sunflower from that napkin and I'm going to go ahead and Mod Podge them down to this little beehive that we are making. Once I get all the little bits off that I don't want, of course, and I just do a thick amount here and just press it down and then... Um, Finish off the other side and then you want to, and sorry, this is going kind of fast here. Um, I sh maybe should have sped this one down a little bit. This is what you get when you have to rush. Sorry, you guys. So, Mod Podge it down. Do the whole thing like this. This is the last one here that um, I'm doing on the top. All right. And then I have this other napkin that my friend Katie got uh, had sent me and it has a little bee on there. So I'm going to cut the bee out of one of those little pieces. And that means I got three other squares I can use on this napkin. So that's great. And um, we'll go ahead and Mod Podge that down. And once that dry, it actually looks like it just melts right into it. You can't even tell the bee is there anymore. But I do add another bee later that I dirty up with some of that vintage photo distressed ink as well. So here's another piece of the napkin and I'm going to trim it in half and um, I'll go ahead and rip off the ends here like this and then I'm going to go ahead and mod, pot, blah, 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 mod podge, I can't talk right now, went ahead and ripped the other end too and then I'll mod podge this down to the glass jar. 
These glass jars I got from Hobby Lobby um, when I was making candles. They used to have a little sale on these. Sometimes I could get them extremely cheap. Like sometimes when they have little sales and stuff, I've gotten them for as little as like 50 cents a piece. But now the jars have went way up and I would not pay that price for those jars at all. When you can go buy ball jars in a big pack for way less. So that's where my jars came from. Um, and then I have some that I've ordered off of Amazon too. So I have some that say USA on the bottom and some that have like an anchor on the bottom. So once we're done Mod Podge and that, I will show you the rest later. All right, and then here's the third. I'm using the top of this funnel here, and I'm just trimming off that weird edge that the burning left and cleaned up my mess. And now I'm just going to wrap it in foil a couple of times. And I trimmed off the um, excess here and all the end. And then um, I am going to stuff that end down into the bottom here that's what I'm doing and then we'll trim the top and then I'd go ahead and do that for a second time here same thing roll it up trim it down and um, make sure everything's nice and flush here all right and that uh, foil can get Pretty pointy and cut you too, so be very careful when you're messing with this. Now I have one of those uh, dowel ends, but it's flat on one side and a ball on the other side. And here I'm just grabbing some fabric here because we are going to cover this uh, cone shape that we had created with the funnel and the... Um, the uh, aluminum foil. My goodness. All right. I'm just trimming that down to where I need it. And I thought I cut it too short again like I did in my, one of my other videos. I did that recently. I don't know what I was thinking here. But I ended up having to rip that off and try again. <laughs> and there we go. That's better. And now I just glue it onto itself until it's completed and then I'll go ahead and trim it down at the bottom and um, the top a little bit or no I don't trim the top I don't think I didn't need it all right now I was deciding if I just wanted to take the whole napkin and cover it and um, that wasn't really working for me so I decided that I'm just going to cut or cut use the water method and tear off the um just the flowers of the sunflowers and then i mod podge them down just here and there um all around the hat that i have created here okay i was trying to get that to sit up there but it would not sit so i had to just lean it up against something um, and then I did some more. That blue sunflower is extremely pretty. I like that with the green. Oh, wow, that's really pretty together. What do you guys think? You guys are going to have to let me know today which one's going to be your favorite project. I really love them all, and I think they all came together very nice. Um, but I will have to s probably say my second one is probably going to be my favorite today. You guys, I used to not really like gnomes very much. I used to think they were kind of creepy. <laughs> but now I like them. I think they're kind of cool. And um, I like making them too. All right. This is coming together pretty nice, this hat. I'm really loving how this turns out. And I can't wait for you guys to see everything in the final reveal all together, too, at the end. And this last little piece here. And then I just trimmed off the 
the bit that I didn't need, okay? And let that dry. I just, like I said, I had to stand it up against uh, something because it wouldn't, um, I couldn't really get it to sit on anything. Now this little black um, dowel cap in, I don't know how you want to call this thing, um, but it's flat on the bottom so it can make this um, gnome stand up. Now I have these little bits of like fur um, that you can make gnome beards out of. I save all my pieces. That way if I ever have little gnomes that I make, um, well, I actually do make gnomes. I make magnet gnomes for the fridge. Those are my most popular item that I sell at my craft fairs when I sell, when I do have craft fairs. Those go within a hot second. I literally, I make those when I don't want to go downstairs and I just want to sit up on the couch. They're quick, they're easy, and I make them out of gloves the fingers of gloves and like I said they go quickly um, when I'm at craft fairs and I sell them for a few dollars a piece actually not very much <clears throat> now I'm going to glue the hat down after I glued the hair on and then I'm going to outline this with the last little piece of jute rope I have left. You guys, I really wanted to do the last project with a thicker jute rope. But I'm kind of glad I didn't because I actually like how it turned out. It looks very nice. And yeah, I'm just doing a little rim around the hat of the gnome. And then I have this little nose that I painted pink and I painted two more of those flat beads with black. And then I'm going over top of the nose here with the, the distressed ink. And then I go over top of the entire thing with the distressed ink as inked ink, <laughs> distressed ink. Actually, this one's the oxide ink, but whatever. I go over the top of it. And then those two little black ones are going to be the bottom for his feet and then of course the nose. So I decided for the beard that I was going to add a little bit more beard which I don't show you that and then I add the nose. And now I'm just going to put the two feet in the center and don't ask me how but I got it off center and it ended up having to fix that. All right here's the final reveal of everything. These are the little um Silos or birdhouses, whatever you want to call them. Here is my lamp that I made. There's that little bee I added. I love this. I think it turned out amazing. And here's what it's looking like with the lights off. It's very bright and very pretty. I just used some fairy lights that I got from Amazon. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. And here is the last one. These are very earthy to me. I like them. I love it. He's just chilling. <laughs> oh, so cute. And here they all are all together, you guys. I just want to say don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you like what I've done today. Bye. I'd like to thank the host today for having me on the playlist. And thank you to all my subscribers and all your continued support here on my channel. If you are new here, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. It really helps me grow on YouTube, and I appreciate all that you do when you do that. Also, if you hit that bell button, you can be notified every time I upload a new video. I want to say thank you again for watching Sunflower Tasha DIYs. You can follow me on Instagram on my personal account, or you can follow me on my gallery account. My personal is obviously my personal, and then my gallery is just where I post pictures of things that I had made on my YouTube channel. Once again, thank you so much for all that you do and all your continued support. Bye!